Good morning, online community. Good morning, Elma. Good morning, Kathy. I have the robber room going again. Oh, shoot. And if we have my sister, I yeah. found some more books that yeah. she had, and she has Janice's. Two. Okay. So can we just buy Jen? Oh, sure. Uh, I don't know in my head what that will yeah. okay. just take one and put not paid okay. and then I'll work it out with you. Yeah. I need to do the same thing. Yeah, because I have two of my gay clients. Okay. And I have a room. Just write down what you take. Okay. And then I'll let you know what you owe. Does that work okay? Good morning, Lisa. Okay. 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 Okay, it's all back there, and just write her name down and let me know what you took. Okay. She's gonna take the. It's back there. Um, in the and there's a there's a envelope back there, honey. Thank you. Just put it in the and just write down what you take, please, and then I'll get it figured out. So. It's so confusing to everyone because we need two books this time. I didn't know that would be such such a such a big deal. I know. Uh, yes, there is. Yeah. So we'll have to we'll figure that out as we go. There's a place to start in Genesis too, that like your returning uh, students kind of thing. So we'll probably pick up there. But yeah. all right. Well, I'm gonna have a word of prayer, and then um, if you have if we have more Genesis questions, then I will um, take care of them uh, right at the end. And the books are back there for those of you who are in class. And um, yeah, go ahead, Mary Ellen. Yeah. Um, I went to another. Um, Book sale. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say I went to another Bible study no, class. No, what? No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and I, and I, I know. <laughs> Cheater. No. Book sale. I found some more um, Bar Barclay, Barclay commentaries. Yeah. And I just gave, I'm, I'm going to buy them. Just no buy them. Much. Yeah. So if anybody wants any, I do. Okay. Yes. I, I will. Um, I almost bought because Kathy kept talking about. Um, the message. Yes. They have the message there. Only yes. Only the New Testament. New Testament. Uh -huh. so yeah. I okay. okay. But I, I wanted to, yes. but I thought I, I already had the whole yes. thing. Yes. So. Yes. But if, if I see them, I'm yeah. just going to buy them. Yeah, you know what? Um, so good morning, Joyce. Well, Mary Ellen is talking about uh, the Carbondale so Public Library book so sale. Oh, Kathy, you are here. They're having a book sale. They're having it right now. I mean, it's all they, 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 they say now they're having a box sale. Okay. 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 okay, we'll have to finish after class <laughs> so that we get going and cover everything that we need to cover this morning. Um, Mary Ellen, any time. Mary Ellen, any time if you want to bring them and put them on the back, you know, oh, and put them on the ticket. Yeah, so yeah, just get. Yeah, people Absolutely. can take them, pay you, whatever. Yeah, uh -huh. anytime. Love going to Thank you. Sales, yeah. Richard and I both. Yeah. It's like, well, and when somebody will use them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, okay, I'm gonna pray. Okay. And so if you if Sorry. you want to yeah. listen, stop talking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is me being very nice. Oh, Father, we gather before you this morning, Lord, and I thank you so much for this group. And I thank you just for the journey that this study has been. Uh, I'm always a little sad when we come to the end of something because it's just, um, it's been so sweet to spend this time with you uh, as we've studied Galatians. And I thank you for what you have taught my heart through this study and how you're continuing to teach me. This is one of the things that I um, I'm continually learning about studying the word is that the seeds that are planted sometimes sprout up months, uh, weeks, months later, Lord. And um, there are things in my life that I continue to wrestle with this question of what does it mean to be free? And, um, and so I thank you for your, the foundation that you have given us on this, uh, on this topic of freedom. And I ask, Lord, that you continue to just open our hearts to what you would have us learn through it, Lord. I just um, invite your presence. I know it's here. I, I ask you to uh, open our hearts and to be invitational to your presence, Lord, that is here as we study this last chapter. And again, I just so appreciate those who um, are here in person and online um, now and later, God. I just so much appreciate community in which to study. And we lift this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so um, good morning, Kathy. And I, so I'm going to start with a pop quiz. Uh, <laughs> that's what you get. No pop quiz. Um, and if you do, have, if you do, <laughs> if you do, um, the Lord will provide barbecues. Um, if you do have other Genesis business that needs to be taken care of, um, we can do that at the at the end. It won't, it won't take very long. So, um, if, in case anybody missed it, if you don't have your money today but you want your books, that's fine. 
just write down on the form uh, what you took and write that you didn't and we'll, we'll work it out when class starts or in between whatever I'm not terribly worried about that so but I wanted to do just like a little pop quiz this morning um, I think this this study has been very tight for me if you will like it's been very focused and um, so I just wanted to see what we've taken from it and so I wondered if a couple of you might be willing to take a stab at explaining justification what does it mean to be justified Faith. To have faith, yes, yes, justification comes from faith, and Paul would say it comes from faith alone, right? And why do we need to be justified? What are other words for justification? Let's do it that way. Well, did the one-time sacrifice on the cross not achieve justification? Well, what do we have to have? It, 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 it achieved the offering of justification, well, we right? Have faith. Accept it. We have to have faith, right? Yeah, that's what Paul says, that justification comes through faith alone, right? Um, and so what are some other words for justification? Why, why is it important? Why do we need it? What does he say Abraham is in whatever chapter that was? Right. Righteousness. Yes, yes. Righteousness. Righteousness. So justification is a right relationship with God. Okay, justification is a right relationship with God, and um, what and faith is what brings justification into our lives, instead of what is it that sometimes we seek to bring justification into our lives, but actually falls short. Works, Works laws, rules, legalism. However, we want to kind of define that. Okay, so one of the main themes of Galatians, I think, and you guys might have different opinions, but these are the ones that I really kind of pulled out, was this idea of what creates justification, okay? And I think we probably all would agree that Paul has indicated very strongly, right, that it is faith alone. By faith, Abraham is justified, and we are heirs of Abraham, right? We are sons and daughters of Abraham, and we can have the same justification through faith in Jesus Christ, because that's an Old Testament story, obviously. We're post-resurrection Christians, and so our faith uh, comes through the sacrifice, as Kathy said, of Jesus Christ being what covers. Anything else about justification? So you would yes. say that the, you said you mentioned the book theme. Yes. The book theme is, is justification by faith? Um, I think, let's um, justification by faith. Let's say yes, and and camp on that for a minute and see if we get anything different or, okay. or, or more okay yeah um yeah uh, one of the key freedom yeah yes but if you if you if like let's say justification through faith is the theme of the book then that if we have faith then we're not counting on law, therefore that's we are free. So I think yeah, that okay. could go yeah, under, I mean, yeah. yeah. So I'm just wondering, if, if justification through faith is the theme of the book, um, then let's see if everything else is answered by that theme. Does that make sense? Kind yeah. of as we go through this and say, is that still our, that's what I do usually, is that still our theme? Does that still work? Yeah. Um, 221 was one of the key verses. And um, so let's just refresh our memory and see if 221 supports, if supports that theme. I had two key verses written down for me, 221 and 324. Those were things that were, um, somebody read 221 to refresh it, whoever gets there. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, and Christ died in I think that would support that theme, don't you all? Yeah. What does 324 say? I did, 324 was like a secondary for me anyway. Yes. Here, yeah, 324, I think. Therefore, the law has become our steward to lead us to Christ so that we may be justified. I think that would support that theme. Yes. Uh huh. Justification through faith. All right. And I think it's really good. I mean, justification is such a big churchy word. So I think it's really important that if we're going to use it, we understand how to explain it. Right? That's one of the key things when we get to um, this point. Did you have something? In, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. As a result of the faith. Yes. Yeah. And because if, if we if we believe that we're justified through faith, then we will let go of some of those other works, laws, legalism, rules that are. Freedom without that leads to licentiousness. 
I write, right, yeah, we studied that extensively, didn't we? Yeah, the things that come from freedom without the accountability of um, the love relationship with Jesus Christ, right? Because what ultimately, if we have faith in Jesus Christ and we want to model our life after him, we, we will, I'm going to say that, get to that in just a second, but it will be evident in our lives, right? Not by the way that we are um, participating in some of the things we studied either last week or week before um, of the flesh, right? Michelle, did you have something to add to that? It looked like you did. No, no. no. Oh, Mary Ellen, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> now you're on the spot. Pop quiz. <laughs> Michelle has something to say. <laughs> I, um, when I was looking through, I think it was in one of the um, um, commentaries that I looked through, they had 216. Okay. As, as a key the, verse. As key verse. Okay. What does and it say? It says, yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Jesus Christ in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. Because by works of the law, no one will be justified. So I think that would support wow. that yeah. theme also. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, 216 is what that one was. 216. So, there, yeah. So, um, so all the key verses that we're feeling like are helping us sum up the verse are all pointing to that theme, I think. Yeah. So, so, so far, we'll... we'll um, we will we'll hold to that. And so I'm going to put that up here. Just um, the theme is justification by faith. Okay. All right. And so then underneath that, kind of, let's talk a little bit about. Oh, let me put that back up. Um, how would we describe choosing? The law versus freedom. What does that look like? Um, bondage. Yes, the law, bondage, slavery. I'm trying to think mm -hmm. of some other words that um, uh, one of the words that I looked up when I was studying the word freedom was constrained, like not being able to. If you think about, let's think about this twist on legalism. So let's say there are 10 things that we have to do in order to be right with God. Like that's what we've been taught or that's what we've created for ourselves or whatever. And we have this Holy Spirit stirring. That's hard for me to say this story. This Holy Spirit stirring that we are to be using our lives, our gifts, our spiritual gifts in a way that communicates Jesus' love in this kind of way. This ministry, this outreach, um, this um, gift, this teaching, whatever. But the fact of the matter is, we just don't have time to develop that gift, or to work on that gift, or to start something, because we have dedicated ourselves to being right with God by these ten things every day. Does that make sense? And so actually, the ten things that we're doing that are not faith things, they are law, they are chain, they are actually restraining or constraining the work of the Holy Spirit in us in that we cannot give ourselves to the work that we may be called to because we're so busy trying to be right with God through the work that we are that we're trying to be justified by um, and I think that is maybe a more common problem within our churches than we would talk about or admit to or recognize where often people are not using their gifts and there's a lot of reasons that we don't follow the Holy Spirit spirit and we've talked about this a lot of times um, a lot of it's fear or feelings of inadequacy or not being able to adequately adequately handle the, um, the lies of the enemy. And, you know, so there are a lot of reasons that we don't. But sometimes the reason is is because we're, we have an, there's an expectation that we will do these things or check these boxes. And we don't know how to say no to that and get out from under that in order to actually fulfill the calling that Christ has on, on our hearts, on our lives. So, you know, um, if anyone yeah. in here has Netflix, yes. there was a movie that... Dan found we watched last night. I love that movie. It's yeah. called Same Kind of Different as Oh Me. yes. Yes. And it's about I read that book. Mm -hmm. I mean you yes. can but they lived yes. their or she lived the faith out. Yes. Right. And yeah, same kind of different story. as me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've read I haven't seen the movie, but it's I've read the book. Yeah. Same kind of different as me. Oh, okay. Um yeah. Oh, I've read, read that book. book? Uh -huh. Yeah, I've read that oh, book I several years ago. It's really good. It's yeah. So it's really good. So um but yeah, so let's talk about um how do we choose how do we fall into the trap of choosing law? And how do we not fall into the trap so that we can choose freedom? Let's talk about that for just a second. Uh, because we do choose it. Gonna, there's so many things about our spiritual walk that we do choose. And so what are some reasons that we choose? Good morning, Sue. What are some reasons that we choose law? 
Well, it's easier. We can check the boxes. Yes, that's one of the things we've said repeatedly is that it's measurable. It's something you can see. It's measurable, mm -hmm. yes. And so uh, our human tendency, I think, is to move towards things that are measurable, concrete. Um, if you do this, then yeah. this, okay? Um, Allow, what, uh, yeah, go ahead. Allowing uh, other people's expectations. Yes. Like that, yeah. Letting that be your yes. driving force yes. than what Christ yes. would have mm -hmm. do. I was brought up in this church or this community of faith. My parents practice their faith this way. Everyone that I know practices their faith this way. I shouldn't question that I practice my faith this way, you know, sometimes. And a lot, we've talked about this multiple times, a lot of times that's well-meaning in the beginning, and then it gets very constraining um, in order to um, measure uh, salvation, faith, right relationship with God. Okay. Anything else, reasons that we would choose law? I think choosing law is not as scary most of the time for us. Um, it doesn't require the same amount of risk that depending on the Holy Spirit to dictate, that's not the word I'm looking for, but um, influence our movement, our decisions. Well, it's less it's certain. It's, it's, more, it's comfortable too. It's usually it's more measuring. comfortable. Yeah. We understand what's expected of us and we stay within the ditches and, uh, and, and that's easier. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it's just not as risky. I don't know. I think it's, I think there's less fear. And then the flip side of that is, remember what Paul says about the ones, I think, I, don't, I think it was last week, Paul says about the ones that are trying to get you to follow the law, because he says they're not following it either, but what's their motivation yeah. in getting you to follow the law, getting them to follow the law? It kind of helps them. Look how good I am that I have these followers, right? Yeah. yeah. Look how good I am that I have these followers. So. Um, so that's, that can be a, a downfall too. And so what does it look like to choose freedom then? Why would we or why would we not choose freedom? Some of the things that we just said, the flip side of choosing law, but. It's only miserable for God, probably. It's miserable for what? Measurable. 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 Oh, they said it was miserable. No, 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 no. Measurable. Measurable. I mean, yes. I can't check my Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there becomes this um, aloneness that at first, at least this has been my experience, at first can be scary and then becomes quite reassuring. But this aloneness that Christ alone can satisfy and that I answer only to Christ's direction. I get my affirmation, my approval from Christ alone. And um, when other people maybe don't agree with that, then I go back to him for reassurance or correction or whatever. But, but the reason sometimes we don't choose freedom is because we don't know the freedom provider well enough. Um, and I think when the closer that we get, there's probably a better word for freedom provider, but um, the closer that we get in our personal connection with Jesus, the more we will understand how safe his love is and how constant his love is and how faithful his love is. And even when he asks us to take a risk for him, what we might think is taking a risk, he offers that lovingly so that we will grow, not so that we will go out and get a failure or something. That's not what his motivation is. Because even if we get a failure, it does not matter because that's a failure by the world's standards. And if we're obedient to Christ, we never fail right um so I, I think part of it is is we don't know and or trust the one who offers us the freedom to the degree that we need to and when we don't know that and trust it then we will fall back on something that we do know and trust and those are the rules that are clearly li uh, lined out for us so. other uh, other well, thoughts opinions yeah go ahead not knowing and trusting i mean freedom to me in this would be salvation. Okay. So mm -hmm. if you don't know, then you're, then you're not really saved because you know what you know that you're saved. I Do mean, you think? Jesus is, yeah. has entered your heart and you and the Holy Spirit and all that and, and things just become known. They did with me. I mean, I didn't know anything and then all of a sudden I, yeah. I realized. I, right. You know? I think, and you guys tell me what you think about this, I think a lot of people have a salvation experience that is sincere 
and then they choose a legalism works rules path to try to work that out. <coughs> um, and um, so I think there are, uh, yeah, they don't know what freedom is. right. And I think, and I, and I would, I would say, as we grow in our relationship with Jesus. Um, we continually learn more about what freedom is and we continually uh, he opens our eyes more to how we're depending on something other than faith in our relationship with him Mm -hmm. so I think these things like walk alongside each other if you will because and I and I can only speak from my own experience but I have been sincerely walking with Jesus since I was five years old right Mm -hmm. but over the last like four or five years I've had this tremendous like uh, eye-opening, heart-opening experience to what it means to like really be free in Christ, and I'm like in a learning process about that, you know, and um, and to let go of some of the things that I was doing to try to earn His love and grace that I didn't need to, um, and really kind of just sit comfortably in the fact that you are just loved. And you can't. Period. Period. Uh, yeah, no, period. You, just, you just are. <laughs> And, um, and well, yeah, and so that Ellen yeah. said this one day yeah. that her son in law or son who is a minister, uh-huh. and almost all Grand of son. his uh, before he ends his sermon, he says, And Jesus loves you, yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's not that he just loves you, but it's like, and there's nothing you can do about right. it, right? So yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah, which is a wonderful way of thinking, right? And so, I think I, I, you know, I just encourage us not to say, Well, they those who do it this way i really encourage us to say where do i do it this way where do i lean towards legalism rules or works um not because they are a product of my faith relationship but because i've either been taught or accepted or somehow along the way i've decided this is what a good christian does or something instead of this is what a connect you know a follower of jesus christ does Sometimes we have to separate the expectations of church. And, I, and I've said this a lot of times. I'm not down on church. I love the local church. Um, uh, but we have to separate the expectations of church to the following of Jesus. And sometimes those, they get confused sometimes. Go ahead, Kathy. Yeah. You know, to me, Abraham had a tremendous amount of faith. Uh-huh. I mean, and Noah too. Yeah. I mean, to do what they did was radical. Uh-huh. It sure. It would be like, and, and I wonder, I, I think it probably does go what you said to Noah. Yes, yeah, because sometimes. I don't know that I would right. just leave my country and right. my family. And yeah. When I was 100 years old. And it's, <laughs> I, I think it's helpful. When I was 100 years old. I think it's helpful wife, to. It was almost that old. It's helpful to remember that Abraham insane. did have a lot of faith and he is the father of faith and he is. Yeah. And then, but at one point, too. They made their own way with Hagar mm-hmm. because it wasn't yeah. happening in their timing. Yeah. So Abram yeah. was, all, you know. So I mean, and so I think both are true of us as well, right? And he wasn't um, perfect. And absolutely yeah. not. Abraham no, and no, and nor are we, right? Yeah. So we. I, so I think that this is a. I want to, this. Uh, to me, this is not a, a one and done kind of thing. This is a continual process of uh, um, the Lord opening our heart to where we can have more freedom in Him all the time. So. Um, and so here's the here's the last question for your pop quiz this morning. What is the evidence of our choice? And the choice is law or freedom. And and again, this is a continuum. It's not a check. It's not a I don't do law. I do like. But as we grow, as we grow in less legalism and more freedom in Christ, what is the evidence of works. that? Is it works? I mean, because it says faith without works. Uh huh. Yes. Peace. Yes. Yes. Would you say choice? Yes, it's love. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If you walk in the spirit, or if you, uh, oh gosh, I forgot. Twenty-five. It's five twenty-five. What does it say? Uh, um, uh, if you are in the spirit, then walk by the spirit. Is that what it says? This is if you live by the spirit, but it's also walk. If you live by the spirit, then walk by the spirit. Right. And what is the evidence of walking by the spirit? In 522 or 23, right, the the fruit of the Spirit, right, yeah. Those things will be evident. Think again of the apple tree. We will not strain to make apples. We will just produce apples. So it is works, it is love, it is the fruit of the Spirit. And and it says, I think it was in the message version that we talked about maybe last week when we were talking about this fruit of the Spirit, when the message says legalism will never produce these things, right? They will not, and it doesn't mean that nothing, that we wouldn't do anything good, But it will not produce this continual outpouring of the fruit of the Spirit that is a blessing to other people around us, right? Because we'll have to be battling it, so we'll have to be thinking all the time. I had this personal experience just thinking about freedom. I was just really working in a situation in my life asking God, what does freedom look like in this situation? 
And um, I kept trying to define it in that like, in order to be free, I need to think about this or I need to do this or I need to make these decisions. And I was making it very like, almost like legalistic in my own it's mind. Like I need to decide this, I need to, I need to believe this, I need to whatever. And I really felt him kind of like, sweetheart, what you really need to do is just know that I am pleased with you regardless of the outside influences and then you will not need to recheck your brain all the time and think this way and do this way and go to kind of like legalism even in this own one situation in my life you will simply just say but I am safe in his love for me and he is pleased with me and so then you won't you'll be able to not like nullify that opinion does that make sense and so like that and that's why I'm saying this we're working this out we're figuring this out as we go because I think when we hit up against a situation this has been true for me when we hit up against a situation and say that doesn't feel like freedom I don't feel free in this right then I think we can sit right there with him for a period of time however long it takes and say show me where this is not a faith thing in my life like either where I'm like lacking faith in this or I'm not thinking about you I'm trying to do it in my own strength because I know this doesn't feel like freedom right now and I believe your word that says freedom is what I can have and so well, how do I get from where I am to that place of freedom so I think it's a continual choice, and part of the evidence of the choice is when we recognize that we don't have it, uh, we seek it, right? We ask him, how do we get it? I've gone back to old habits. I don't know about you all, but anybody, but not like sometimes uh, old habits die hard, and there were things that I used to do that every once in a while I'm like, oh, well, I can feel myself doing that again, and that's not what I need to do, right? So, so really, when you make yourself read so much of the Bible, is that really kind of like legalism? Sure, it can be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you if I if you use it as a measure. Yeah, yeah. if you yeah. use it as a measure, absolutely. Um, then it can be for all the things that we do for Jesus can be a form of legalism because that comes from our heart issue, right? It's all heart issue, which is very hard to measure. So that's why we look for other things sometimes. Other other thoughts about like um, were you done with that? Other thoughts on um, just kind of an overall. Review. I want to look at our at a glance and see if we have any holes, and then we're going to dive deep into chapter six. That's kind of my plan. Anything else before we? So we got a we got a book theme. We have our chapter themes. Chapter six theme. I put um, fulfill the law by living in the peace and grace of Christ. Fulfill the law. Um, the, they will know. Oh, on the at a glance, page 139. Uh, Sorry. Are you yeah. talking about one? Six. No, six. For chapter six. Oh, just the last me. one. Yeah. What did you put again? Fulfill the law by living in the peace and grace of Christ. Okay. Yeah. You had given that. Fulfill the law by right. living in the peace and grace of Christ. Yeah. So I'm going to read chapter 6 from the message. I have enjoyed doing this uh, this time and getting a different feel. So if you want to get into chapter 6 on your in, in a different Bible version or in, um, in the worksheets, chapter 6 in the NASB, the worksheets are the NASB, and we will finish up chapter 6. <clears throat> Live creatively, friends. If someone falls into sin, forgivingly restore him, saving your critical comments for yourself. You might need, you might be needing forgiveness before the day's out. Stoop down and reach out to those who are oppressed, share their burdens, and so complete Christ's law. If you think you are too good for that, you are badly deceived. Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given, and then sink yourself into that. Don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself with others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. Be very sure now, you who have been trained to a self-sufficient maturity, that you enter into a generous common life with those who have trained you, sharing all the good things that you have and experience. Don't be misled. No one makes a fool of God. What a person plants, he will harvest. The person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God, harvests a crop of weeds. All he will have to show for his life is weeds. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's spirit do the growth work in him, harvests a crop of real life 
eternal life. I'm going to pause right there. That's exactly what we were just talking about with where, where the motivation comes from. The one who plants in response to God. And the only way that we can plant anything in response to God is if we know God and we identify his voice in our life and we're able to respond to that. And we will know his voice by spending time with him. There's just like no shortcut for that. So the one who plants in response to God, letting God's spirit do the growth work in him, right? Harvest the crop of real life, eternal life. So let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Right now, therefore, every time we get the chance, let us work for the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. Now, in these last sentences, I want to emphasize in the bold scrawls of my personal handwriting the immense importance of what I have written to you. These people who are attempting to force the ways of circumcision on you have only one motive— they want an easy way to look good before others, lacking the courage to live by a faith that shares Christ's suffering and death. I'm going to say that one more time. They want an easy way to look good before others, lacking the courage to live by a faith that shares Christ's suffering and death. And so let us not be followers for the sake of following. We don't need to support someone else's like need to have followers, right? Um, let us not, let's not do that, even if it means they're not happy with us. All their talk about law is gas. They themselves don't keep the law, and they are highly selective in the laws they do observe. They only want you to be circumcised so they can boast of their success in recruiting you to their side, and that is contemptible. For my part, I'm going to boast about nothing but the cross of our Master Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, I have been crucified in relation to the world, set free from the stifling atmosphere of pleasing others, and fitting into the little patterns that they dictate. Can't you see the central issue is in all of this? It's not what you and I do, submit to circumcision, reject circumcision. It is what God is doing. And he is creating something totally new, a free life. All who walk by this standard are the true Israel of God, his chosen people. Peace and mercy on them. Quite frankly, I don't want to be bothered anymore by these disputes. I have far more important things to do. A serious living of this faith, I bear in my body scars from my service to Jesus. May what our Master Jesus Christ gives freely be deeply and personally yours, my friends. Oh, yes. May what our Master Jesus Christ gives freely be deeply and personally yours, my friends. Oh, yes. So like in my situation, I was just talking about, you know, I think I feel like that's what Paul is writing to his friends at, uh, in the churches in Galatia. And that is when you come up to a stumbling block in your life and you think, I'm not free in this. Like this does not feel like freedom. May you dig deep in your faith relationship with Jesus Christ and figure out what is the obstacle to that and uproot it and get rid of it because that's not of Jesus. Right. Um, Thoughts on that, on chapter 6, kind of just like reading it, hearing it in a different, um, before we dive in, kind of verse by verse. All right, well, we're, um, I'm actually going to have you pop out chapter 5, and I didn't do this myself, because we want to, I just want to connect chapter 5, the, the bottom of chapter 5, the back of chapter 5, with where we are going in chapter 6. And so, verses like 13 to 15 of 5 are talking about how the Galatians should serve one another in love, right? Verse 13, through love serve one another. Verse 14, the whole law is fulfilled. This is in five, yeah. The whole law is fulfilled in one statement. You shall love your neighbor, neighbor as yourself. We spent a lot of time on that. And then verses like 16 to the end of this, through like 25, was talking about the contrast. Remember, between the flesh, fleshes fleshes, <laughs> the deeds of the flesh, and the fruit of the Spirit, right? And verse 25 kind of sums all that up, which we just looked at just a couple minutes ago. Laura read it to us. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Because that is, you know, like I was just saying with the freedom, that is a choice, okay? And it doesn't mean that we're not, that we haven't had a salvation experience or that that wasn't sincere, but what did we do with that salvation experience? Did we choose to allow the Holy Spirit that now dwells in us to, to create change, to create um, peace for us to live abundantly? Um, Jesus says, I have come that you will have life, right? And have life abundantly. 
Um, are we leaning into that? Or are we just satisfied because now we're going to heaven when we die and we don't need to do anything different with our life, right? Um, and so that's a big question. So 25 is, a, is just a powerful verse, I think. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Um, and then 526 goes back to uh, how we live with one another, other believers. Let us not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. All right. And then Galatians 6, 1, so that's where we left off. Let us not become boastful, which I don't think about this as I, like, am studying week to week, but then when I'm like, well, that is kind of a funny place to just stop then, you know, and then we would pick up chapter 6, because remember when it was written, it wasn't divided it was, like this. Yeah, yeah so yes. um, so sometimes I just, I just okay, well, that's the end of chapter 5, and I'm like, well, that is kind of an odd place to, to stop. But So then in chapter 6, we are going to begin with, like, the opposite of boasting, right? Um, and it talks about restore with gentleness. You see that? If anyone is caught in a trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. And Barclay had a comment about this that I wanted to read to you guys. And those of you who use Barclay, maybe you read this this week. But um, it's not too long. But it talks about, um, it's, just a, it's probably about like maybe 10 sentences or so. And it says, Paul knew the problems that arise in any Christian society. The best people can slip up. We were just talking about Abraham, right? Yeah, we don't. This is not. The word Paul uses does not mean a deliberate sin, but a slip that might come to someone on an icy road or a dangerous path. Now, the danger of those who are really trying to live the Christian life is that they are apt to judge the sins of others too harshly. Anybody? Okay. Mm -hmm. There is an element of hardness in many good people. Nobody here or watching, I know, but think of the hard people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there are many good people to whom you would, could not go and sob out a story of failure and defeat. They would be bleakly unsympathetic. All right? This is one of the reasons that we don't share a lot of the things that are really going on inside us, even in our faith communities, or sometimes especially in our faith communities. It's not a safe place to put that. You fear judgment or ridicule or criticism rather than, a, uh, what does he say, a spirit of gentleness, okay? But Paul says if people do slip, the real Christian duty is to get them on their feet again. The word he uses for to correct is used for making a repair and also for the work of a surgeon in removing some growth or in setting a broken limb. If you think about that as someone if someone comes to you with a failure or a defeat, then our job as a Christian is to reset that broken limb in gentleness because our goal isn't to kick them while they're down, it is to help them heal, right? It's to help them heal. Put them into their former position. Yes, <laughs> or even I might even suggest a position even stronger than yes, their former exactly. position, right? Yeah. yeah. That which was weak in you now can be set in a way that it will grow stronger again. Um, the whole atmosphere of the word lays the stress not on the punishment, but on a cure. Think about how differently our faith communities would operate if this is how we approached one another, where you were able to say, I actually have a we I, I have a accountability partner that I meet with every week, and one of the things that we talk about almost every week is where we failed. This is where... Um, this is where I either slipped up, I didn't do it right, um, or I just, you know, I was selfish, or I didn't respond. I knew what the Holy Spirit was asking me to do, and I said no, you know, those kind of things. It's so humbling to have that be a part of your week every week, but it's so important. And I know I'm in real trouble. This is, I'm just being really honest. I know I'm in real trouble when I can't think of where I did that. Okay? Because I did it every week. <laughs> Okay, and when I like look back over my week, because usually I make a couple of notes. We have this little card that we kind of follow, and I make a couple of notes on things that I want to share. And when I find it, like there's like the flip side of that, we also share. Where did you respond to the Holy Spirit? Where were you a blessing this week? You know, because we want to celebrate that with each other. And when I have those to share, but I can't think of where I um, slipped up like this to allow this other person to, because we have a trust relationship where she approaches me with gentleness, right? And I do the same for her, where we say. Not that's okay, don't worry about it, but good for you that you own it 
And what'd you learn about, right? Like, I mean, we're there for each other to say, yeah, let's try not to do that again. But not, but it doesn't change the love that we have for each other, right? But I know I'm in trouble when I can remember the things I did that were good that I want to share, but I can't find the place where I slipped. Yeah, because it's there. I'm just not cog cognizant. Is that the right word? Of it. I'm not conscious of it. Yeah, go ahead, Michelle. Yeah, we just think about how Jesus handled the people that he came across mm -hmm. in his life. You know, a good example is the woman caught in adultery. Absolutely. And that was with gentleness that he, he yes. did with her. Yes. I mean, it wasn't with condemnation. Right. So. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, exactly. Um, let's see. Um, not on a punishment, but on a cure. The correction is thought of not as a penalty, but as putting something right. And Paul goes on to say that when we see someone make a mistake, we do well to say, there but for the grace of God go I. Yeah. It reminds me, my son plays high school basketball, and it reminds me so much. I, I'm always like... I'm <laughs> ridiculous I went about high school athletics but like it moves me to tears a lot of times when someone has hit someone hard on the basketball floor and someone from the opposing team is down but it's the opposing team members that help that person back up and that this is we're not on different teams that's not what I mean but there's a you can just leave that person there but if you're the one closest to him it's him because it's boys basketball if that uh, you know I always hope my son is the one that black or white uniform, or black or white skin for that matter, because that's uh, how the color of the boy's skin that, that play with him. Um, that uh, if someone's on the floor, it's just your job to lend a hand, right? Yeah, because we're all in this together, kind of, yeah. So um, anyway, I thought what Barclay had to say about that was just, it added a lot to, to, that, to that section of verse for me. And then we looked up on page 105 in your homework, we looked up the word restore. Let's see what we learned about that, just to kind of add to. I think, you know, talking to other people about where they have slipped up in their Christian walk is a really important part about what we do, and, um, but we need to really understand what our job is in it, I think, because we can really make a mistake um, in terms of how we handle it. I've talked to people before just about just the church hurts that they've had when they tried to take either um, something that had happened to them or something they had done to a place that they thought would accept them and that doesn't go well, it's really, it kind of really adds to that pain and it makes you feel, it can make you feel like this isn't a safe place even just to be. Like if I, you know, if I'm not perfect, I'm not welcome here. And that is not the message we want to be sending to people. But uh, 105.4, what did you guys find? It, it, those of you who got that way, or got that far, uh, what did you find under the word restore? Reinstate. Reinstate. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I didn't understand was rehabilitate was one of the words. Okay. Well, it's like the surgeon like, uh -huh. and putting it back to the other position. And at rehabilitate gives me the idea like of a process even, mm -hmm. where again, it's not like a one and done kind of yeah. thing. Um, because if, you know, if we actually are in a position to help someone through something, uh, a lot of times that's, what are we doing to check on them? What are we doing to help them with accountability? And where, you know, where are we uh, building in accountability in our own lives so that we have a place where that is supposed to be something that we talk about? Well, I think in churches sometimes we see that when there is a, and I'm going to use the word problem, although that's like saying sick. I don't know what that, yeah. you know what that is really. But I think we see in our churches many times that they either pretend it wasn't there or they judge it too harshly. Uh -huh. There's you've got to find a happy medium mm -hmm. there somewhere of gentleness. Yeah. Uh, am and I it, am I the only one that thinks that? Well, way? it's an <laughs> investment in people that sometimes we're not um, either willing or able or whatever yeah, to yeah. to give. Um, you, you almost have to have a balance. In between. There's a difference between the kind of faith community that Paul is writing about. Yes. And the way that like is that our churches are structured sometimes where it's a place to go to church on Sunday, right? Um, and I want a place to go to church on Sunday, so I'm not down on that. But how are we either with just our faith community or like in a smaller group in our faith community or whatever, how are we building a place where we actually could talk about some things that we're really struggling with or that are obstacles for us you know, without feeling like we're going to be criticized and shamed? Yeah. So, anything else on that word restore? I had two and this kind of goes almost against what we're talking okay. about for restoration and um, rehabilitation to reinstate. Mine says to complete thoroughly uh -huh. and to make perfect. Uh huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Strengthen perfect. I guess that's in the the far end of the. I think so. The restoration. Going back to the farmer yeah. vision 
plus uh -huh. maybe making that stronger. That's the, the final thing is yeah. to make perfect or to complete their Yeah, that's the goal. And perfect, yeah. I would probably, if we looked that up, I, that's a that's yeah. not a perfect in a worldly sense. That's a perfect yeah. in like James, James talks about perfect, yeah. right? Yeah. Every perfect yeah. Gift is from above, or something. That remember, I don't know if you, those of you who study James with me, but there's like a perfect that is perfect in Christ, like yes. the, the Christ's perfection in us. Yeah. 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 Um, I think about it. Just pops into my head. You know, I think about after I, I was in a serious car accident. Uh, most of you know that, and, and I was in rehabilitation for like seven months. And I think about those like I went three times a week for two hours a session for seven months, basically. And you think about, and so the first day I went, virtually nothing changed. Right, and the second day I went, virtually nothing changed. Right, mm -hmm. but then every week they would measure different things about me, like how far my elbow would bend and how high I could lift my arm, and all these things. And every week there would be um, not every week, <laughs> most weeks there would be an improvement in the measurements. Right, mm -hmm. and then um, when you had a setback, then they would adjust the therapy. And then most weeks my weight would get a little bit heavier, right? As my muscles were getting stronger and my bones were kind of healing and getting put back together. And so that was, you know, that was like a long process. But at the end of it, they were like, I, and I, I'm just, I'm never going to do, I'm never going to bowl again. Like, because my yeah, shoulder's not yeah. going to do that, right? Like, that's just not something that's in my life anymore. So I used to bowl and I'm not going to bowl. So I bear the scars of that season okay and I think if you think about that sort of metaphorically it is likely that when we go through a difficult season and we have little slip-ups all the time too so you know this is on a continuum but um, if we go through a difficult season it is likely that even if we are thoroughly repaired right uh, we were released from the, the you're yeah, you're, you bear the scars you are changed mm -hmm. yeah so I don't so I don't think that we can say but I would also say my heart and my body are, are on the other side better than even what they were before even though like maybe physically um you would say well your body is weaker uh but i know so much more about it now mm -hmm. that i actually am stronger and like now i'm like because of that situation i work out more and i take care of it differently and see some things that i didn't do before so i would argue that probably i'm in better health now than i was before right so okay. anyway yeah well, i have the same thing with my knee absolutely yes and, and it's i'm finished now with pt yes because I met their requirements, right? But yes. that doesn't mean that doesn't mean finished. you're done working on it, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's mm -hmm. just um, yeah. You know, it's still sore. Right. It's still, it still bends weird, but yes. it bends a whole lot better than it did yes. the first week. Yes. Yes. Right. You know? right. <laughs> yes. And, yeah. So yeah. It's, it is a process. Yes. Like yeah. yeah. Really. And inevitably, <laughs> you will always bear the scar, yes. right? Yeah. So. Um, Let's see, um, verse 2, in, back in 6, verse 2, it talks about bearing one another's burdens and how bearing one another's burdens fulfills the law of Christ. And on page 106 and 107, if you flip your homework page, we did some cross-references. Uh, 106, number 7, where we looked up um, 7 at the bottom. John 13, 34, and 35. Um, oh, right above that, Galatians. You see where I am, number A, 1. See that? What did we learn in the Galatians just from last week? was actually from Deuteronomy. Love your neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself, neighbor. right? John, uh -huh, John 13, Jesus is speaking here, and what is his commandment? Love one another. Love one another. Yes, yes. That's a Christ-like love will show that we are disciples. A Christ-like love will show that we are disciples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah right, right. What about the James, or no, the first John one at the top of 107? Love God, obey His commands, love the children of God. Yeah, yeah, love God, love people, repeat. Like, love yes. God, love people, repeat, right? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And, that, and that goes with keeping His commandments, right? Yeah. Um, James 2, 8 to 12. Same deal. Uh-huh. Mercy to all, love neighbor as self. Yes, yeah. And that has like a no favoritism. I, um, mm -hmm. The no favoritism thing of God is really big in my life and, and we find different I think we depend depending on our personality and our life experiences our circumstances we find different attributes of God that mean so much to our to us and the no favoritism thing means so much to me partly because I have kind of felt like a lot of my life that I was on the outside looking in and um, and I go back to like my basketball example where you know what I want for my son to be about and what moves me when I see it like on the court 
is it doesn't matter which one is down. It can be the star player that's going to score 20 points every time, or it can be the kid that's going to miss the free throws when he needs to not, right? Um, and that when he's down, it doesn't matter who's down. We pause and we pick them up, you know, and then and there's a there's a no favoritism thing there that I think is really challenging for us to model as much as we want to believe we're not biased or prejudiced people. If we look hard enough or if we ask the Lord to reveal in our hearts where we are, he will show us where we are. And uh, and that's an important part of the of the James one for me. Uh, anything else from those cross references? On the James piece. Yes. Uh, I picked up that the sovereign law of God is a unified group of commandments. Yes. Did, this, did, yes. Do you have an opinion on that? The sovereign law of God. It's Say it again. a unified group of commandments. Was that something that you felt through it or that you wrote down like specifically that James said? I thought that's what James said. That's, so if we yeah. trespass in one area, that unity is shattered we, and we become we, transgressors. Yes, okay. yes, that, that unity is sh shattered. If we trespass in one area, that yeah. unity is Is he talking about shattered. unity between us and Christ or us and each other? Do you know? I don't. Let's dig in it. Let's just pause there a second and um, somebody look at James. Is that... Was that in the James part, the eight through twelve? James two, eight through twelve. Okay, let's just let's read it from a couple of different versions. That's what I like to do when we want to know a little bit more about something, because I just don't I don't know out of context. Let's just listen to okay, it a little this bit. One is, uh, this is New Living. I have English Standard. English Standard, Marianne. Let's hear it. Yeah. If you really fulfill the royal law according to Scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. For okay. he who said do not commit adultery uh -huh. also said do not murder. Uh -huh. If you do not commit adultery but do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. Mm -hmm. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Mm -hmm. So I pick that up to say, and let's see how it goes with what Nancy was saying, that is, like, you don't get to pick and choose yeah. Yeah. what laws Which you follow, right? right? Follow. Which is one of the things that Paul is saying about these people in chapter 6, where he's like, they don't follow the law, and they're very selective about what parts of the law they follow, right? Mm -hmm. But how does that go with what you're thinking? Um, because you said, because we're wanting about the unity. Because this is, this is, no, I don't hear that it's talking about unity within the group of believers except for the no favoritism. Like that's the, because that's so kind of the point. So it's unity within the commandments. Read yours again. The sovereign law of God is a unified group of commandments. If we trespass in one area, that unity is shattered and we become transgressors. So the unity is pointing back to the other unity. Law. It's a yeah, unified. It law. Law. That's it. Okay, this yeah. One, I think yeah. it's interesting because it talks law. about you will be judged by this is new living by the law of love, the law that set you free, and and the verse before that is that if you break one of those laws, if you will, and we're not talking about. The 644, I think it's talking We're about talking about the love God, love others. You have, yeah. you've broken all of them. So, yeah, so I, I, let's see if this helps. So I see, I think what James is saying is the law is a package deal. Yes. And if you try, if you, if you try to separate something out of that package, then you've kind of broken that package, package. apart. Yeah. So you, we're it's not, not talking about legalism law. Mm -mm. We're talking no. about. No, because he talks about the yeah, law of liberty. Like the law of liberty. Yeah. It says now below, yeah. the law of liberty is not a series of separate edicts. Right. But a unified you know, whole yeah. that ultimately calls God's people to a life of love and mercy. Yes. yes. So the, the law that's together is love God, love others. Yeah. And it's I think what James is specifically love, saying here mm -hmm. is if you pick the others, you don't get to pick and choose the others. Because if you love these people but not these people, you then you've shattered the idea of love God, love others, and you've broken apart that unity of, of the law. I think that's what, so that's good digging. Yeah, good digging. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's go to, um, what's next? I lost my place. Six, share all good things with those who teach the word. Let's let's talk about that for a while. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Share all good things with those. We looked up share on page 108. Number two, flip your page one more time. Number two, um, 
be there. Communicate and distribute. Be a partaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it does mean share, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. What did we to support them? Too. Uh -huh. yes, it yeah. Does. yeah. Yeah. This this section is something that I'm like working out in my life. So I don't have like really strong. This is um, I'm I struggle with this part just a little bit. First um, Corinthians nine seven to fourteen. That's two C mm -hmm. on there or mm -hmm. two no mm -hmm. yeah two C one. You see that word about halfway yeah. down. What do we learn from the First Corinthians one? Give the right to be supported by those he ministers to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those who teach the gospel should be given shares of what others have earned. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those what about in the Philippians one? He also that said, point. share my like troubles. Uh huh. Yes. You know, I, I think that's as important as yes. the material. Yes. Right. You know, the deal about you're hungry, but yes. have a good dinner. Yes. Only you don't give them. Uh, yeah, you're right. cold, but yeah, yeah. be warm cold, and stay well. Warm, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not what we're yeah. looking for here. Yeah. I need your coat, actually. Yeah. <laughs> the message says, and second, I think it's the first Corinthians verse, I wrote it down. Um, the master directed that those, Master Jesus Christ, and this is Eugene Peterson saying this, the master directed that those who spread the message be supported by those who believe the message. Yes. That those who spread the message be supported by those who believe the message. And, and the reason that this is challenging for me is because growing up in the church and living in a church uh, living in a household where the primary source of support came from the church, I think sometimes maybe um, makes this a little bit harder for me because I have a lot of experience with people who depend on the provision of the church but aren't doing their part in spreading the gospel or sharing the gospel. Like it's almost like um, um, sometimes the church... Uh, promotes security in a way that's not earned and um, and I struggle with that and so I'm like at a place in my life right now where I'm sort of struggling with like pastoring as a career because in the world that we live in career means something very different than what it means to spread the message and be supported by the message and um, so I'm just being honest about that. I, I read this and I I believe I know what it I believe I know what it's communicating. And I also believe that that's not a lot of times what we think it's communicating. And um, you know, there are some churches even that feel like the better their pastor looks and the more their pastor has in material material things, the better their church looks. Like that is that is sometimes a belief. And um, and that is not what this is talking about. Um, so anyway, I just confess that I, I, I struggle with this just a little bit um, because I think in our humanness, those of us who are in pastoral roles and spiritual leadership roles, we can get very caught up in a worldly uh, support, what we need, versus what it means to be supported by a group of believers that you're leading. So I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Anyone dare to say now? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of disparity in people that share with that share the word with mm -hmm. believers mm -hmm. and that they support because it all depends on how rich of a church you're in. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it does, yes. And so, and so as we move up the chain of churches, if you will, when we start out in a small church that we don't make as much money, but then as we are in ministry longer. Um, then we get bigger churches that are wealthier. And you probably base your opinion of yourself on that, or it would be hard not to. Is that evidence of our effectiveness in the gospel, or is that evidence of the effectiveness of a, of a church system? That's, that's a church system. I, think I it's don't know. Yeah. That's, that's, that's that I, yeah, it's probably a question that doesn't actually need answered, but I yeah. think it's, you know. But, um, it, you know there is a yeah. system, and, and unfortunately, it goes back to a miserable system. Am I making you uncomfortable, Michelle? <laughs> <laughs> Michelle's a pastor too. <laughs> it's okay. I don't. And like I said, I don't. I'm not saying this is how I feel. This is what you should see because I don't know. This is a struggle for me. I struggle with the system of church 
It's also um, a temptation to the minister or the sheriff of the mm-hmm. gospel. Because yeah. everyone wants to be successful. Mm-hmm. Yes, and how we, and how, how do we, support as um, whatever different churches, because like, different churches have different systems, but what, how are we telling people that this person is successful? What are we, what, oh. what are we, what are we using to measure that, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, and are we go, using the money we give them? Right. Go <laughs> ahead, Michelle. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. <laughs> this is really a safe place. There's no judgment here. <laughs> well, the way I, I view it, I mean, this is something that I've worked for for many years, and um, you know, I I have three degrees, mm-hmm. and I could get another job mm-hmm. if I wanted to, but this isn't a job; it's a ministry, mm-hmm. and I don't measure my effectiveness by my paycheck. Mm-hmm. I measure it by the relationships. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but you may be unique in that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Like, I mean, some denominations. It's interesting because some churches provide a home, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and so I have known of situations where a church that provided a home then understood that that was their home. And they were able to be in at any time that they wanted to for whatever. And people kept keys and would go in and out at their at their luxury because it was theirs. Okay. And so that kind of thing happens sometimes where you're like, well, this is ours and we're sharing it with you. And this is how you and so sometimes those things get very tricky because if you are either the pastor that lives there alone, could be male or female, it doesn't matter. But if you are the homemaker, let's say, or you have children there or whatever, um, it's not nice to just oh, schedule yeah. some repair on the house or whatever without yeah. consult, yeah. right? Oh. So there's all these things that, that, that well, we're providing this for you. And so there are strings attached sometimes with the thing that we're, to, but we're providing this for you. Um, but are you really, you know? So I just, I, I think I'm just, like I, like I said, I'm just being honest because how do we, here's the question that, that matters, I think. How do we take this instruction as f- faith communities? How do we take this instruction and then live it out in the other instruction that is we are to love without partiality, right? And the fruit of our faith relationship with God is love. And that this kind of support of someone who's spreading the gospel stems from that love place mm-hmm. then we'll do it right but that mm-hmm. you know but that's that's really that's challenging and it's asking a lot of people that sometimes then you know we all slip up right we all slip up so anyway that's more than you wanted to know about that but that's a part that i so um verse seven is um talks about how god is not mocked and here we talk about whatever a man sows he will reap or a woman um it says in verse eight we sow to the flesh and we reap corruption or verse 9, we sow to the Spirit and we reap eternal life, right? That's probably stuff that we have heard other times. And we, and last week, we talked a lot about the flesh being contrasted with the Spirit in Galatians. And um, in 525 shows up again that those who walk by the Spirit will fulfill the law by loving one another because that love comes from the Spirit. So those who walk by the Spirit fulfill the law, the measurable things, if you will, by loving each other, and that love flows from the spirit. Can I read? Can yep. I regress. Yep. I love this. I, I don't know. Is it about Martin people going Luther. into parsonages? And this is about <laughs> <laughs> these kind of passages about the teacher. You know. Yeah. Are I love this. It's just a short paragraph. The passages like this are important, yet can be awkward for the preacher. Um, Martin Luther wrote, "These passages are all meant to benefit us ministers." I must say I do not find much pleasure in explaining these verses. I am made to appear as if I am speaking for my own benefit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, but that's just such a—it's an eloquent way of saying what you are feeling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I, I just found it very interesting that even—I mean, back then. Back then. Yeah. It—it it was no different than it was with Paul and with you now. I think there's a sense in which too, like if I have to explain the verse to you, then I probably don't want what you would offer me. Yeah. Because it's like, it's like with my younger son, Josh, who sometimes like, sometimes he's just like, what do you want me to do? Like to be good, you know, like what do I have to do? And my thing always is kind of like, I don't want you to be good. I want you to want to be good. 
And that's why I'm in this for the long haul, right? Okay. Like, I want you to want to be good. It's not a payment, I, but a sharing. Yes, you and so if you, if you know Jesus and you're yeah. connected with Jesus, and if what I'm teaching you is beneficial to me, to you, not me, but I'm, in, I'm you know, generalizing, mm -hmm. then you will want to be good mm -hmm. in that I will want to recognize that I appreciate what you're offering and support you, however that, whatever that means, in a way that is meaningful to you, right? Um, but if I have to tell you, and I think that's one of the things um, with different places that I've, situations that I've been in personally, where it's like, if I have to like tell you what you need to do to support me, then I'm not sure we're in the kind of really, like, yeah, I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, go ahead, Laura, yeah. Well, um, a different twist on mm -hmm. this too would be rather than a monetary mm -hmm. um, form of support. Yes. The, the message says, and, I, and I've just been sitting here thinking yeah. about, we are currently without a minister in our church, but I was thinking about our previous minister mm -hmm. and just different relationships yeah. that people had with him. But it says, be very sure now, you who have been trained to a self-sufficient maturity, mm -hmm. that you enter into a generous common life with those who have trained you, sharing all the good things that you have and experience. Mm -hmm. So it could, it could be the give and take of a Absolutely. loving... Mm -hmm. trusting yeah, relationship well, as well yeah. or no. encouraging yeah. you know yeah. and, and yeah. building up yes not you know, just a monetary uh, I think about like when I was first pastoring a church and I had a young child um, and while like while we were there I had a miscarriage I had that accident that I was talking about I had another baby like I was there long enough I was in that season of my life where I went through some things and um, you know one of the things that I hmm one of the things that I think about now is uh, if I, what it would have meant to me for someone to say, can I take your child for a few hours so that you can work on whatever it is you need to work for us, right? Like, um, or can I help with that in some way? And um, those people were so good to me. That's not what I mean at all. But I just like, there are other things than money, right? That um, can be really helpful sometimes when someone is like, you know, in a, in, uh, in a place of service. And I think one of the things in my ministry now that means so much to me is when you all or anybody else will say, this is what I learned from this. Like, this is how this well, that makes all the hours of, and I study for myself as much as for you all, and I'm very honest about that, right? Um, because I learn so much too. But that is one of the things that always just means a lot to me when someone sends me a note or just says after class or whatever, like this has been so good for me because it just it just helps encourage me. And so I, you know, I just encourage you with the, you have a lot of faith people in your life, um, or like spiritual leaders in your life, and I just encourage you, like, how do you? encourage them how do you love on them well how do you recognize from that place that we're talking about in this like fruit of the spirit place we are able to with holy spirit discernment look into the lives of other people and see their pain and depending on your personality and your experiences we do that differently i know or we can see their need let's say it that way right i think that was even something we read this week like what is their need like what is really their practical need? After our accident, it was one of the weirdest things. Like one of the um, people send us all kinds of things and most of them were very helpful. But one of the most meaningful things to me was that because of the way that my shoulder was damaged and my physical limitations at the time, I couldn't wash my hair and it was a really, it was a struggle for anybody else to wash my hair. And so when I got just a little bit better, I would go up by Schnooks where I, where I live, where there's a Great Clips there. Mm -hmm. And those ladies in there about every like maybe third day or so would wash my hair, okay? And somebody in our faith community found out that I was doing that and sent me probably like $50 in Great Clips money, like on a gift card or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so every like few days when I went up there and I thought, that was one of the most like sensitive, meaningful things. Anybody's like, this is what you have to do in this season because, it, and not, we can't always know everything about that, but some, she, she figured that out somehow, right? That I was going up there every like third day or something and was like, here, this is just the way that I want to bless you in this difficult season. And so I just encourage you to like pay attention. Like, and this is not just for your um, Bible teachers or your pastors or whatever, but just anybody else that you're caring about in your church. Pay attention. What is what is it that they say? 
listen, what is it that they're need? If you, if somebody's going through something, like it's not ever wrong to take a meal and all that. That's, I mean, that's good, right? Because one of the reasons we do that is because food is a practical thing. My mom talked about during that season when, because Josh had to go live with her. Somebody came in her house um, almost every week and just did laundry. Like they just stayed for hours and they just collected laundry. And did, you know why? Because she had a baby she wasn't expecting because she was taking care of my child because I couldn't and all this. And somebody just did, like there are practical things we can do for each other. And that's what this is, that fruit of the spirit. That's that apple tree that's not straining to make apples. They just, you're watching, you're listening and you see a need. And so I got, um, that's a little bit of a tangent, but, um, but for the faith people in our communities, uh, in our lives, that's what what Laura is saying. That's like, no, it's your fault. You got me off on that. No, it was, but no, but what it's saying is, um, share your experiences with God. In that, if you have grown in the love of Jesus Christ, then share that love that they have helped you develop and further with them and with others. Um, one of the greatest blessings that a pastor can have is watching his or her people love each other well, right? Yeah. Yes. Because that means they're growing in their relationship with Christ. So, um, okay. Whew. I'm sorry, I kind of got you reversing. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, verses 9 and 10 continue their encouragement. Seize the opportunity for good. Don't grow weary. All of this. Um, good. Do good towards all people, uh, especially those in the household of faith. Right? And then, um, oh my goodness. Okay, we got some time still. Let's go uh, top 110, number uh, five. We looked up some cross references. What does it mean? Oh, taking care of all people. Here, this is kind of adding to what we were talking about, too. Mm -hmm. I did not think about talking this this much. So in Acts 2 and 4, they're talking about common property sharing with others. Proceeds of... They're selling of land. Yeah, you, if those of you who studied Acts, you yeah. probably remember that yes. with me, where they would like yeah, sell yes. their property and then mm -hmm. give the money to the church. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we just don't pretty much do that kind of thing mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I remember something that Bill Hybels said, Bill Hybels, um, when they were building, bu building Willow Creek and the people who, I do not like, think this is a great idea but the people there were a group of people who took out second mortgages on their homes and gave the money to the church so that they could either buy the property or build the I just remember um that's not we don't we would rather do the opposite like have, sell something you already have don't borrow money to do it but um but uh but yeah but the, I, don't, I don't know that we really do that very much now uh we keep our what's ours and I think it's partly because we keep what's ours and partly we can't see where it's going sometimes you know or what it's going to actually do and so um, that's, I think that's like a little bit of a stumbling block for us. Um, James is talking about, the B is talking about taking practical care of practical needs of others. Gosh, that's just what I was talking about, you know. Um, and some people are naturally better gift givers than others, or not better, but like deeper, you know, thinkers about gift giving and stuff. But, um, but really what, especially if someone's close to you, if God's really put somebody on your heart, uh, pay attention to that. I just encourage you to, you know, pay attention to that and ask him, how can I be helpful here? And it's not, and God love all of us who do this, because we're all guilty of it. It's not, call me if you need something. That's yeah. not helpful. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just not helpful. It's really not. It's, not it's so all. rare that somebody's going to call you if they need something. Right. Like, you know, unless you kind of already have a relationship with them. Like, I might say to some of my best friends, like, you call me, you know, whatever. But even that, that means probably texting them again and saying, I'm thinking about you today. Is there anything I can do for you today? Um, because they're probably not going to just call you if they need something. Um, Romans 12, I'm stepping on all kinds of toes today. Uh, be devoted to one another and live in harmony and contribute to the needs of God's people. Uh, anything else with those? Verse 11 then, going back into chapter 6, there's an authentication that this is from Paul. And then he goes back to his main point. He, pull, he, he brings up the circumcision issue again. And just to remind ourselves, we haven't talked about circumcision yet today. What What is he talking about there? I know. We can't let a class period go by without talking about circumcision. <laughs> you guys would be very disappointed in me if I didn't bring that up at some point. <clears throat> Why does he bring that up again there? Uh, 
that's what started the whole thing. Yes, I think there's a very like kind of subtle point in this that I it's a little bit easy to overlook in that um, I had never seen it before. But he's basically saying the circumcision like gets rid of a lot of the criticism for those of us who are preaching the gospel. So if we preach the gospel, they'll kind of lay off on us about preaching the gospel okay. if you get circumcised, right? Yeah. So um, this is about the preachers as much as it is about the receivers, right? It's easier for me if you get circumcised. Can we say it that way, yeah. right? Like just yeah. it's just easier then for me to continue on in my work. I actually um, thought it was an invitation for them to be to live like them, mm -hmm. and it made them look good. Uh, the legalists, look right? Good. Yeah. And God's gonna love you either way. Yeah. Circumcised or uncircumcised. But it's easier for me if you get circumcised. If you get circumcised. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Made, made your life easier, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's what they were um, they were promoting actually the legalists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it, it's like the difference in grace and love. <laughs> I wrote in the corner I don't know if I got this from a commentary or it was something that I was just thinking but I wrote over verse 13 look how good I am that others follow the traditions I tell them to uh -huh. so there's that yeah. like sense yeah. of yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. yes yes you're right yeah he's yeah. preaching all yeah. that and yeah. Yeah. yeah you have these Jews that are um, okay, so then um, they do it so they won't be persecuted, verse yeah. 12, but they don't even keep the law. We talked about that. They only, and they um, even keep the law themselves. And I think it was the message that says, and they're selective about which part of the law they keep, right? Mm -hmm. And the contrast is in verse 14, and Paul boasts in what? Cross. The cross, cross. cross, yeah. And he says in 15, circumcision doesn't mean anything now. And on page 112... So he's really going back to we, salvation. It's a hard issue. Yeah. 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 Yes, the justification comes yeah. through faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure salvation is a hard issue. And um, and you can't you can't get around that. Like, in the, in the evidence of it is the way that we love each other. So, And the way that we correct each other. The way that we support each other. The way we take care of practical needs. This is the way that we love each other. Because I think sometimes it's comfortable to sit around like, well, I love people. Um, and uh, yeah, and we do, but are we doing the things that are loving, right? And that's what Paul is really encouraging them to. Page 112, 3, another cross reference, 3C, they're about halfway down. Mm -hmm. What did we learn about the cross and the world? The world is evil and the cross is holy. The world mm -hmm. passes away. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just don't put, just put, don't put all your treasures in the world. Yes. Right. And I put your treasures in the kingdom of God, the world which is, is forever. There's, it's like a community of sinful humanity. Yes. Um, it's almost a rebellion against God. There's this sense, I mean, that I, what, what First John John is saying yeah. in First John is like, yeah. if we love the world, it's contrary to the love of the Father, That's right. Right? right? And that, that goes back to even like the materialism, the thing like with the supporting uh, spiritual leaders and things right. that we were talking about. Like, why do we, what is our motivation for supporting our spiritual leaders either? Is it to check the box? box. Yeah. Is it? Or is it to or like make our church? Love. Love. But, right, yeah. Or does it come from love, love right? Because again, I think the pastor would, I think the pastor would say, I don't need to teach you these verses if I've taught you about Jesus, right? Yes. Because if you love and are connected with Jesus, you I don't do want it. you to do right. I want you to want to do right. Like, and so, um, so the motivation is for like from the wanting to do right, and we will want to do right when we walk by the Spirit. Yeah, all that kind of comes back together. How about the Philippians one there at the bottom of one twelve? If you got that far, would we learn? Um, we talked about what a true circumcision is, right. and what does that yeah. mean? The heart. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, Paul says that even in another place where he says this is a circumcision of the heart, right? I think that's Paul. That, that's what that's what God desires of you, and it doesn't mean that our heart needs to be cut or something, but it's like it's the the true demonstration of whether or not you are in a covenant relationship with God is from what flows from your heart, uh, not what you do to your body or not the you know the boxes that you check, right? How about the Second Corinthians five seventeen? That's one of my favorite verses. It talks about a new creation, right? Mm -hmm. A new creature is reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit, which is evident by the fruit she produces, he or she produces. And then the Romans 8, 11 to 17, that his spirit lives in me, 
And we have an obligation to live by the Spirit, not the flesh. Not to do good, but to want to do good. Yeah. Yeah, to know how to do good because we walk in the Spirit, right? Um, uh, page 113.6, we talked about the... Um, Upon the Israel of God, mm -hmm. you guys, to that point, do you, that's the covenant nation or those that are adopted into the covenant. So who is that? Us. That's right. That's right. Those who are justified by faith is that new Israel of God. I don't can't remember how, exactly how he says that, but that new. Um, and then we looked up. Um, Paul said that he has the brand, the brand marks of yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, on page one fourteen, we looked up what that meant. Mm -hmm. Well, you and see? I didn't get that far. That's okay. To be honest, so yeah. what, somebody tell me quickly. What yeah, that that's okay. Was. It's the well, word is Easter is brand. stigma, S T I G M A, and it's uh, slaves and soldiers. Uh huh. Slaves and soldiers that are like soldiers. kind of like marked yeah. for ownership. Yeah. Laura, mm -hmm. some of them are holy stars that go with serving. I don't know if this I still don't. happens, but think of like when a, a rancher or something brands yeah, his cattle or something. Cattle. Um, that it's like a unique sign, mm -hmm. and that, that you know that belongs on that ranch or something. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what these brand marks are. Um, one of the definitions was a scar of service, even. Um, and Barkley was talking about how that could have been because of Paul's struggles. Like it could, he could be of talking like literally or figuratively. Kind yeah. of just depends. Yeah, yeah or both. Certain, right. We, he was prosecuted. Right. And just scars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, like you think about, like, even, you know, Mary Ellen was just... He was beat up and stoned. And <laughs> yeah, Mary Ellen was talking about her knee surgery, and so yeah. there's, like, this, you know, you're going to wear a, a literal scar or something like that. Yeah. But, you know, we also wear the scar of change. Like you were yes. saying, you know, it cha the, the different difficult you. seasons change us. And yes. so, um, so it can be both literal and uh, metaphorical. And then um, just finishing up that Acts 14... 1 to 22, C, about halfway down on 14, uh, 114. Yeah. Um, oh, the Jews stoned Paul and left him for dead. That's one of the things yeah. that could be about that. Yeah. And then there's Second Corinthians, and he talks about, oh, and that, he talks about his physical sufferings yeah. and his hardships. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So. Yeah, he really, uh, he really listed them out in, in that. In the second Corinthians, uh, four to seven. Yes, he has a long, I was yeah, shipwrecked, long, I was beaten, yeah. I was put in chains. I don't know if you guys wrote those down. I heard that. Yeah. Uh, everything that happened in yes. the was just like yes. put in yes. the two yeah. yeah, there's one place that he's stoned, yeah. yes. and they leave and him for dead. For right, him. yeah. The, oh, that's in the uh, that's in the Acts, yeah, then, that we read, yeah. Mm -hmm. He left for a while, but then he went back to Weistra. Yeah. That stoning, I'm thinking, man, this man was faithful. Yes. I don't know yeah. that I feel well, after they left me for dead. <laughs> the thing is, with someone like Paul, where I, you know, he believes this. He's like, he, what yeah, I, he to die? Do anything else? Um, right? Yeah. Like I have, like I made my choice a long time ago. Exactly. And yeah. so if I'm, if if I if if I live through today, then I get another day day to Good. preach the gospel. Yeah. And if I die today, then the glory of that is mine. Right. Yeah. And so if you when you live that free, yeah. right. When you actually live that free, um, that it doesn't matter, then it then you're uh, able to go back to wherever they beat on you because if that's where the Holy Spirit sends you, because you're like either way, I win either way. I either win because I get to stay here and do the work that God has called me to do, or I win because I'm with Him and my work is over. Uh, there's, so, there, and I'm trying to remember what book this is in, and I, I know there was a cross-reference when we did Jonah years ago. Yes. Um, about Paul, and 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 he simply was saying, some days I have a hard time with, and, and this is my wording over, you know, mm -hmm. over his, but a hard time knowing which I want most to sit yes. here and serve him yeah. and preach for him, or, yeah. or, or to be go done. to heaven and, and yeah. serve him, right. and be with him. Right. Yeah. And, and I mean, obviously quite opposite of Jonah, who, <laughs> who went 800 miles the other direction, but who um, was a whiner about everything. But in all, in all fairness, how many, I, that just that phrase itself, which would serve him best? Yeah. Being here or being there? Mm -hmm. And how many of us really think that way about our life? Mm -hmm. I, unfortunately, 
there's material things out there. Yeah, I think we, 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 we think more. And, we, and I wish I knew a better answer than that. We think more that way about our life as our focus becomes more on eternal things. I period. Think that's so. just, yeah, I, and that's and just, I do see that. yeah, I think I that's just, that. um, that's just true. So, how does Paul end with his letter to the, end his letter to the Galatians? What does he wish for them? <laughs> Yes. 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 Yeah. I think ultimately he says, you know, may the grace be yours and stop it. (laughs) And stop stop doing this. Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) Any like any takeaways that anybody wants to share, just from today or overall? Was there? Kind of like a nugget of truth that you feel like is important in your life because we spent seven or eight weeks in Galatians. I think we've been in there eight weeks now. So freedom, freedom, yeah. I I look at it. I look at that word very differently now because of the weeks I've spent in here. Yeah, yeah. I think I understand that better. I do too. Yeah. Yes. It isn't. Yeah. No, I know that. It isn't. I mean, it should be the easiest way. It's simple. But it's, it's simple, not easy. But not yeah, easy. it's easy. Well, yeah. It, it's easy knowledge. that it's not like difficult, but it's hard but, in that it's countercultural or right. counterhuman something. Yeah, go ahead, Mary Ellen. Yeah. I I have found that with this Bible, as many Bible studies, I probably shouldn't say this, but <laughs> with as many Bible studies as I have done, this one has just hit me as being so. Knowledge. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, With things that are so important yes. in our life today. Today, yes. Yeah. It's very and, applicable. And yes. I, I found yeah. this to be more applicable than some we've done. And every I, time I, every yeah. time I, I get into it, and it's like, yeah. Yeah, why haven't, why haven't I read Galatians before? Right. How many other yeah. of his letters are like this? That I don't know about you. I know. I wouldn't have gotten it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe. I don't know. I may have read it and not really understood it. I think sometimes when we read it, we we hear the repetition in it and Mm -hmm. be like, I got that. And I don't, I don't need to be circumcised, and so I'll like that's not for me, and yeah, you know, yeah, so, and without yeah, if we don't, if we don't dig a little bit deeper, we don't understand. Really about, what's on the top, what's on the top yeah, we, we don't understand yeah. what is really communicating okay. to this group of people and how similar they are to us, yeah. and how yeah, we need to hear that message really too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I appreciate and I that. Mary. See similarities more in this than I have in a yeah. while. Well, it, that I could relate. it may just be that our heart is getting more tender to his word. Possibly, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's, I like pro- to think that. it's probably <laughs> all right. This I'll applicable, but so um, yeah. So after the break, we're going to be off two weeks, and then after the break, we're going to get into something really different, but that I am already really enjoying. I'm about six chapters into Genesis wow. so far. Oh, wow. um, yeah, I'm loving it. So I just say that as encouragement. For those of you who either are, are buying the books ahead of time or you, for those of you in class that are, already have the books and you want to get a head start, you do not need to do it the way that I do it, but I will share. I, ch- I tend to share the way that over the years I have found what a head start means to me. And that is I don't do the homework at all at first. I just spend time in the chapters. So I go through, now I will give you a keywords list, and if you don't work ahead, it doesn't matter. You're fine. There's no, like, pressure. But I know some of you don't. I, okay, let me say this first. I encourage you to give yourself a break. And here's one reason why. Because we, as humans, when we fast from something, we find more joy in it when we get it back again. So I really encourage you to at least, like, for a week, don't do anything at all. Like, let yourself miss it a little bit, okay? Because I think that you will. But sometimes, because we spend a lot of time in it, the work can feel a little bit like work. work. And what the one thing we don't want to do is have this be something that we check the box, which is one of the reasons I always say, if you don't get all your homework done, it doesn't matter. Like, it's okay. Um, we have lives outside of this, you know? And for me, I've continued to make this a higher priority in my life all the time, but that too is a process. So this, there's, there's no reason to worry about that. But for one, I would give yourself a break. I really would. Um, it's always bittersweet but, and, when I'm done with one. It's yes. Like, oh my gosh, it's so nice to be done with that. But then I, I do miss it. Do something different for a little while. Pick up a different devotional or just listen to on, you know an audio version of the Bible or something. That's just my encouragement to you. But if you do like working ahead, the thing that for me I have found the most helpful is to just spend time in the chapters first and then um, 
then those things are marked and I can read them you again when I go to the homework, first. but I'm not marking them at the oh, same see, time. I but look forward to that's marking. just I'm yeah. like you. I like I the more. So, so, it doesn't, I <laughs> this is <laughs> this is not yeah, I didn't yeah. like the fact that we that I did all the marking for this yes. personal opinion has nothing to do with how I as he teaches it. I just want you to want to do good. I no, I'm just kidding. It. <laughs> see, I uh, you, after I was like marked all that, I'm thinking no, I'm not going to have that to look forward to every week. All I can tell you is the, you the, is the way that I would love to. I would love to. Hey, listen. All I can tell you is the way that I like it. Have you ever seen I do. All right. I think I've done all the damage that I can do today. And I am going to pray us out. And then there are, so there are books if we still need to do that business uh, when we're done. Let's pray together. Holy Father, thank you so much once again just for... Um, the conclusion of a class and just for what we have learned. I'm so grateful to the way that you've opened my heart to some different things, Lord. Um, there are things, especially in this last lesson, this last chapter, that I know I'm still going to need to be thinking about for a while, that I'm still going to need to be talking to you about for a while, that you are doing a work in me and helping me have a deeper understanding of how you want me to think and live and act and be and so I appreciate the compassion that you have in that your timing is right for us. And so the things that you have brought out in my heart that need to be looked at, Lord, are different than um, some of the other people that have taken the class. But I just pray that we can all consider this class as something that still continues to marinate, Lord, in our heart, in our spirit, and that you are still doing a work in us through what we have studied and what we have learned. And so I just appreciate that for me, and I appreciate that for all of us. And I do just pray for us, Lord, over the next couple of weeks as we just take a break from studying, um, at least studying like this uh, for a little time. And uh, I do already miss it, Lord, but I'm grateful for just um, just for the chance to, to miss it. And uh, we look forward to getting together again in a few weeks, God. So again, I thank you for this class and those who have joined me in the journey. And I lift all of it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Sign off here. Thank you all who are watching. Oh, I missed.